Let me start this morning by reading from Paul's letter to the Corinthians. His first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 15, from verse 1. And he says, Now, brothers, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received and on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel you are saved, if you hold firmly to the word I preached to you. Otherwise, you have believed in vain. For what I received, I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures. First importance, says the Apostle, is that Christ died for our sins. Now, I don't have to tell you or remind you of the frightening situation in which we find ourselves. Frightening in terms of what's going to happen to our healthcare facilities. Frightening in, in terms of what's going to happen to the, the, the world's economic uh, situation. And, and while we can think in these broad terms of it being health system and economic problems, it's ultimately going to filter down to the individual. And those are going to find themselves with the biggest problem are those countries and those individuals who find themselves in debt. I've hated seeing what financial debt has done to people. Some years back, I, I became a, a formal debt counselor. Uh, and that was because there were people in the congregation who had got themselves into, into situations of debt that they couldn't get out of. And the, the, the stores or the banks wouldn't listen, listen to me merely as a pastor. So I had to get accredited as a debt counselor because the debt was strangling the people in the congregation. Now what annoys me most about this whole issue of debt is the spin that, that the marketers managed to put on the whole issue of debt. So we've got fancy words. We've got words like uh, like credit, for example, when they're actually talking about debt, that we can have a credit facility or that this is a credit transaction. Or, or they tell us that, that we can be credit worthy, which is just another fancy way of saying, and that's how much they can get us into debt. And none of the ads seems to mention, or at least it doesn't, they never mention right up front, that ultimately our debt needs to be repaid. As a rule, I would encourage everybody to get out of debt as soon as possible. Now, I know that the financial gurus have fancy words for good debt and bad debt and, and uh, debt leveraging. I, I, I do understand all that. But the bottom line for the individual is often that they're left with this anxiety about what they owe. As I've been pondering Easter, I realized that as Christians, we of course are most indebted. Good Friday is all about our indebtedness more than anything else and what has been done about the fact that we are in debt. A price has been paid on our behalf and the words used to describe what what happens on that, that first Good Friday, what, what Jesus did on the cross for us, are words that have reference to the, to the slave market. They are financial terms, but it starts with recognizing that we are in a helpless situation, that there is nothing that we can do about the debt that we owe. The Scriptures describes our position as being enslaved to sin, enslaved to sin and the, the 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 penalty for sin is death jesus himself says i tell you the truth that everyone who sins is a slave to sin the apostle paul writing to the romans says thanks be to god that though you used to be slaves to sin you wholeheartedly obeyed the form of teaching to which you were entrusted and and the scriptures recognize that we are indebted as people who are enslaved. And this is the first problem for so many. Because it's hard to acknowledge that we are in debt. At least when it comes to describing that debt as being sin. And so many don't want to acknowledge the reality of their sinfulness. Which is the reality of 
of their indebtedness. And the price for freedom from this slavery is higher than any of us could ever pay. Paul writes to the Romans and he says that the, the wages of sin is death. And as a debt counsellor, the first step was always that people had to come to the counsellor acknowledging that they had so much debt that they didn't know what to do about it. And the same applies to our Christian faith. The first step to recovery is acknowledging that we are in debt. And that means acknowledging that we are sinners. At this point, the scripture moves to, to the, the slave market. And the words that are used are words like uh, redemption, or ransom, or buying, or purchasing. Those are the words that are used to talk about what Jesus achieved on the cross. And the price that is paid at any slave market would be the value that the buyer placed on the slave that they saw. Those of you who have seen pictures or watched movies about, about slavery would, would understand something of the horror of the slave having to stand up there and, and be examined by the one who was going to buy them. And then the buyer, the purchaser, would place a price on that slave. What was that slave worth to him? I remember watching TV some, some years back and, and uh, watching how a two cent coin was sold for 10 rand. That was some years ago, probably worth a lot more right now. But the buyer determined that that coin had value which at that time was worth 10 rand. And Good Friday is remembering, remembering that God considered us worthy of the life of his son. Remembering what happened at Calvary. And it has to do with the price that God considered paying in order to win you and me back to himself. To free us from the slavery of sin. The ransom paid to set sinners free. So consider some scriptures. For example, in 1 Corinthians uh, chapters 6 and 7, Paul uses this phrase a number of times. He says, you were bought at a price. The price was, was determined and it was death. And, and you were bought, that price having been paid. When he wrote the Romans, he said, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. He paid the price for us. In Ephesians, Paul writes and he says, In Him we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace. Or, when he writes to his, his friend Titus and is uh, teaching him about how to run his church, he, he explains that again that in Jesus, in Jesus, who is our great God and Savior, He gave Himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness. Time and time again, the word used is that a price has been paid. A price has been paid on our behalf. Peter says that you know that it was not with perishable things such as silver and gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life that was handed down of you from your for, to you from your forefathers. But it, you, it was with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or spot. This perfect, this perfect one, this perfect lamb, who had no sin, paid the price for our sin. And so, writing to Timothy again, the Apostle Paul says, There is one God and there is one mediator between God and man. The man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a, as a ransom for all men. So, here's the point. Here's the, here's the wonder of Good Friday. That on the cross, Jesus paid the price for our freedom. Last Sunday, James spoke about 
quoted that, that scripture out of Isaiah 61, that the spirit of the Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners. And, and all of us have been captives, have been prisoners. And, and the Lord Jesus Christ said the Spirit of the Lord was on Him in order to bring about our release, our freedom from that. And He paid that price for our freedom on the cross of Calvary. But it's a price that we can never repay. He gives it to us free of charge, without anticipation of, of repayment. He's paid the ransom price for us. He's bought us for Himself to set us free from slavery. And it's that, it's understanding that, that makes us Christians, Christ's ones. Someone who understands that our sinfulness, our slavery to sin, the price of our, our slavery to sin has been paid by Jesus on the cross. And if nothing else, Easter Friday, Good Friday, reminds us of that fact. Good Friday is about Jesus. But Good Friday is also about us. About our sinful state. About the price that has been paid to set us free. How grateful are you for that? Because surely that's what Good Friday should really be all about. Our coming humbly before our God and just saying, I'm just so grateful to you that you love me so much that you are prepared to do that. And often the reason for our lack of spiritual passion, enthusiasm, is because we, we haven't recognized just how much He's done for us. What it cost Him for us to be His followers. But the one who overflows with an awareness of their sinfulness, who overflows with an awareness of the price that is being paid, and comes and just says, Thank you, our Father. Thank you for loving me that much. And it's a price that we can never repay. We are indebted people. So despite all that I said about debt at the beginning, here's the point of Good Friday. That as Christians, we are mostly, more than anybody else, we are ones who are indebted to our God. And that is the value of Easter Friday. Remembering that. Focusing on that. That's the value of communion. And in a moment, I want to, I want to ask that we, that we share communion together. I'm going to ask that, that as this message finishes, that maybe you pause the video at this point and you, and you go and, and you get some of the elements, that you get hold of, of some bread, or maybe a hot cross bun or a biscuit and, and either some wine or, or, or juice or even water if necessary and, and that you come back with these two elements and we're going to remind ourselves in communion this, this remembrance that Jesus has given to us, this communion, this breaking of bread and the taking of a cup to remind ourselves of what He has done for us and how indebted we are.